is it time to really review the the fact that oil is regulated here? Yes. Um, in fact, that was uh, what we took up yesterday or the other day uh, at the Committee on Energy hearing. We approved the proposed amendments of the oil deregulation law. Okay, as an economist, um, I firmly believe that the regulation is the way to go. Um, mahirap kasi yung situ so, pag the regulation, all we mean is prices are determined by market forces, prices are determined by supply mm -hmm. and demand. Mm -hmm. um, pag, pag regulated kasi, ang government na magdidikta. Mm -hmm. um, hindi na ganun ngayon eh. Talagang we're really towards um, making market forces work, pero may role ang gobyerno. Kung baga sa basketball, ang role ng gobyerno is referee siya. Taga-monitor, taga-tingin, di ba? Kung uh, uh, may nagsasabuatan ba, or meron bang nag-overpricing, meron bang uh, unreasonable pricing. So yesterday, ang ginawa namin, pinasa namin, is yung tinatawag na unbundling of oil prices. Yeah. Hmm. So sa ngayon, ang mangyayari is, kung maging batas yan, ito yung long term. Kasi ang mangyayari nun is, uh, any price adjustment is now um, going to be transparent. Alam na natin ang basehan. Kung sinasabi ng isang oil, oil company, kailangan ko magtaas ng presyo, alam natin exactly why. Mm. Is it because tumaas ang marketing cost niya, tumaas ang shipping cost niya, or tumaas ang pag-import niya ng langis? Mm. Malalaman na natin eksakto. Hindi katulad ngayon, ang situation kasi is every week, nagsasabit ang oil companies ng price adjustment nila. Pero it's based on a formula that is given to them by DOE. Naturalmente, pare-pareho ang sinasubmit nila na price adjustment. Kasi mm. yung formula na yun, does not vary by oil company. So ngayon, the oil company, whether big or small, whether the company owns a refinery or not, pare-pareho ang binibigay na price adjustment. Hmm. So, But it's somewhat, ang, it's somewhat shocking uh, for a lot of, of people now that we're talking about unbundling. That basically, the premise there is that, yes, it's actually been quite opaque all of these years and all of these decades, di ba? I, I mean, yes. we like the idea of transparency, but the, parang, pero naunahan nyo ng tanong na, teka mo na, ibig sabihin nyo, hindi transparent yan all of these years? Ganun na nga. And it's because nga, ang tagal na ganun yung nangyari nakatago sila doon sa price formula na binibigay ng DOE. So parang, ganun eh. Hindi ko, huwag niyo na akong tanongin so, so, kung bakit naging ganun yung price ng DOE. <laughs> yeah. So what amendment are you introducing to allow so, us uh, to take a look at the, uh, you know, unbundled kung baga, uh, pricing so ngayon, of oil companies? So ngayon, sa halip na magsasubmit ang oil companies weekly on the basis of a formula, ngayon, magsasubmit lamang ang oil companies if they need to adjust their price. And if so, mm. they need to show us the basis for that price adjustment. Whatever it is, whether it's cost of imported oil, whether it's cost of refining, whether it's cost of shipping, marketing, mm. etc. So alam na natin kung ano yung mismong driver. So ba anong, bakit ito important? Ito yung magpre-prevent ng overpricing mm. at possible na yung uh, pagsasamantala ng oil companies. Kasi ang nangyayari kasi, kapag pare, di ba napansin mo, yung mm. sinasubmit mm. ng oil companies, pare-pareho to the last decimal point. Mm -hmm. Tama ba yun? Eh, magkakaiba yung uh, policies but, nila, di ba? Yes, ma'am. Is, is, is unbundling a transparency issue or a regulatory issue? In other words, uh, when you unbundle finally with this law, if it, if it does go through, when you unbundle, does that mean that we only get to peak at their computations or does that mean that government also gets to tinker with those computations and regulate them? Okay, so it's two steps. The, kasi deregulated scheme tayo eh. So uh, under the regulated scheme, ang pwede lang gawin ng DOE is to monitor. Mm -hmm. Ngayon, uh, pag mag-monitor siya on the basis of actual costs, okay, at makita niya na, teka muna, mukhang um, unreasonable, mukhang may overpricing na nagaganap dito. The second step is for them to take action. So merong um, task force na i-create DOE na kasama ang PCC, ang Philippine Competition Commission, because overpricing is a co competition issue. Mm. And PCC is an important agency to work with because sila ang merong ngipin. Sila ang merong capacity. At under their law, doon merong malalaking penalties para sa pagsasabwata ng oil companies at para sa overpricing. So yun yung sinasabi natin two steps. Sa ngayon kasi ang problema dahil dito sa sistema ng paggamit ng formula sa pagsabit ng price adjustment. Ang problema, pag tumataas ang uh, presyo sa Singapore, automatic magsasubmit ang oil companies ng adjustment upwards. 
kahit na ang binebenta nila ngayon is old inventory, kahit na yung binili nila three months ago, nung wala pang gera. Bakit? Eh kasi ganun yung patakaran ng DOE. Eh. So parang bang that policy tends to legitimize um, price increases kahit na hindi warranted by actual costs faced by your oil companies. Okay. Mambaligan ko lang yung excise taxes. Uh, you have really good proposals, uh, at least from my from our point of view. Pero uh, nag-desisyon na yung, yung presidente. Mm. Eh, eh, so how do you move forward from here? Is there any other way to change the, that decision? Uh, are you... Uh, is there any meeting forthcoming with the DOF and with the President? Or is it uh, sarado ng tindahan? Alam mo ako kasi ano eh, um, hope springs eternal ako. Um, which is why yesterday, dun sa Committee on Energy, um, nag-last minute um, amendment ako, um, which is to add a provision providing um, the President the power to suspend or um, reduce taxes, mm. excise taxes, as uh, he or she would, de would deem fit. In other words, assuming today, iniisip nila, wag muna tayo mag-suspend, okay lang. At least, kung meron siyang power to do that, at any point in time in the future, kung kailangan na talaga tulungan ang tao, and hindi na talaga, at nakita natin that the fuel subsidy scheme or the household subsidy scheme does not work, nandiyan pa rin yung option to suspend or decrease excise taxes. But wala ba so, yan ngayon sa train? Ah, uh, yung train kasi natapos siya uh, um, 2020. Okay. Hindi na siya effective.